Okay, so over the past two months, as I've done these videos, I've shown off these graphs that I track my progress in my monthly dividends, my progress in my quarterly dividends, and I've had a lot of people ask how I make these graphs, what I do specifically, or if I could share templates of them, and I can't share templates of them. Google really isn't set up to do that. It's always linked to your account, but I wanted to walk people through on how I create these and how you can better create them for yourself. I have done some different things to make them so that they look better for the videos, but I, I want to show you how I would make them so that you can monitor them yourself and, and do it better than this. As you might have noticed, the thumbnail is a little bit different than most of my other thumbnails. This isn't labeled as an episode, and as such, this doesn't have any commentary, doesn't have any news, doesn't have any thought-provoking uh, subject matter in it. Really, this is just a video on how to make these graphs. So. If you're coming here and you're excited and you thought that this is going to be like a full episode with all the commentary and everything, sorry to disappoint. This is just going to be a video on how to make graphs, but I promise we have some good videos lined up. I have one that I'm going to be doing this weekend. It's going to be a sector review on the telecom sector as well as commentary on some things happening around other companies right now. And I think it'll be very interesting. So if you're wanting to know how to make the graphs, I'll uh, go ahead and go over that now. The first thing that you need to know is that these graphs are on Google Spreadsheets. And so if you already have a Gmail account, I'm assuming you have a, a Google account. If you don't have a Google account, just go and sign up for Gmail. But most of you have a Gmail account. This uses the same login. So just make sure you're logged into Gmail and then head over to drive.google.com. So that's drive.google.com. And I'll throw that link in the description as well as on the screen so you can get there. Once you're there, it'll look like this. I'm gonna blur out some of the stuff so you can't see my, my personal documents stored in Google Drive. But what you wanna do is look here on the top left of the screen. So just find my mouse here on the top left of the screen. And I, I'm hovering over the new button right here. You click on this floating new button. Then it has a few options here. Go down to where it says Google Sheets. That's the green little icon. It says Google Sheets and click on that. And boom, that will open you up a new Google spreadsheet. Here we have a blank canvas to be able to start making our spreadsheet. The first thing that we want to do is make it so that we have a graph. So let's go over to insert here. So there's file, edit, view, and then insert right here. Click on that. It has a bunch of options. Go down to about the middle where it has a little bar chart and it says chart. And you click on that. And then that all of a sudden makes it so you have a blank chart show up in the middle of your Google spreadsheet and it says no data because we haven't plugged in any data. I want to do is this, you can drag this around real easy. I want to move it up to, let's put it right here in the E column. That looks good. And we won't mess with the size or anything with it right now. We'll come back to this later. The first thing that a chart needs is it needs to have some dates. So we're going to head and do the date column. Google has all these blank columns. We have A, B, C, D, so on and so forth. Let's just start from the very left. So let's go to the A column here. Click on the top, very top left cell, and then just type in Jan 2019. Hit enter, and then you go Feb 2019. What we're doing here is we're entering in months, Mar 2019. So we've entered in the first three months of 2019. And what we can do, a little thing to speed this up instead of doing this completely manually, is Google's incredibly good at recognizing patterns. The way that Google Spreadsheet works is really, really intelligent. So I can just go to the very top here, then I can hold down the shift key, and then I can click here so that I highlight all three dates. So again, I click on the very top one, hold down shift, and then click on the bottom one, and I have them all highlighted. This little blue square on the bottom here, I can go and click and hold on that and drag it downwards. And what it does is it continues on with the same exact convention that I'm using. And you don't have to use this exact same convention with the three letters and then, then the year. You can use all sorts of different ones. You can use numbers, you can use all sorts of different conventions, and Google's intelligent enough to know what convention you're using and continue on with that as you drag it down. And you can keep going with that. I could highlight all these, drag it down even further, and now we're all the way into 2021. So now we have all the dates. Don't worry about the chart right now. It automatically took some of the data and it's trying to plug it in, but it's not doing it right. So we're gonna go worry about that later. The, the second thing that we wanna do after getting this date column is we have to have some numbers. So you should have the, the data on what you've been paid so far each month. If you're just starting, 
you can find those in like the activity statements or the monthly statements on your brokerage. And that's not just with M1 Finance, that's with any brokerage. They'll have monthly statements that tell you this is how much you're paid in dividends last month. What you want to do is have that data. For this sake, I'm going to start making up numbers. So the top one here, let's start off small and just say we got paid $3 in dividends. Then we got paid $8 in dividends, $22 in dividends. We had a big jump and then we got paid. Now this probably gets to the trickiest part of this whole thing, making it so that this data plugs into the chart and it looks correctly. There's a lot of different options you can do here. The, to get started with it, what you wanna do is click on the graph, so highlight it like that, and then it has these three dots on the very top right right there. Click on that, and then the very first option, edit chart. And then that throws up this chart editor pane over on the right. And this is where you get all the settings. The first thing we'll do is select the chart type, Click on that and let's do an area chart. You can do line, you can do area, um, any of these work, bar charts. I like the area chart, I think it looks really, really good. So let's click on that one. Now that doesn't look correct right now. We have the, the dates going across the Y axis. That's not where we want the dates. We want them on the X axis. And then this doesn't even make sense, right? It's not even plugged in. So what we wanna do is plug in the actual data here. We'll go to the X axis here, click on this. And then it brings up select date range. For this, it makes you want to select this box and try to fill in this box. But an easier way to do it is literally just to go over here and click on A. And then it automatically fills it in for you. And when you click on A, the, the letter A instead of like the first column, the first cell in the column, it automatically highlights the whole column. So what we'll do is hit OK there. And then the next thing we'll do is go to series here, hit edit. And then, like you did the first column, just hit the second one, hit B, hit OK. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do is on these three options, when it says switch rows slash columns, use row one as header or aggregate column A, you're gonna wanna hit aggregate column A. And then the chart should look like this. This is what you want it to look like. Now it looks pretty jam packed right now. And in my opinion, we have too many data points on the bottom here that's making this look a little, a little condensed. So if we go back over to column A here, we can simply go like this and we can delete off a lot of the options. We can delete off, let's delete, delete off all of 2020 and onward. Then when you do that, the chart updates because now it only has these data points and now it looks a little bit more friendly. You can see the dates are along the bottom there. You can see the, the amount of money along the top here it'll automatically scale. So as you fill it in, let's say that we have a month that's over $100 and boom, you can see the chart adjust and it makes it look really pretty like that. Now there's still, there's still some differences, some things that you can do. You click on this, you can go to edit, chart again, bring this back up and let's give the chart a title. So now we can go over to customize here. You can go to chart and access titles here. You can type in the chart title right here. So you go, monthly dividends and then I like to make it so that it's centered and I'll center it and I think that looks really good see the thing that I do is when I'm making these videos I know that it's a lot harder to see if people are watching on their phones or just watching on their computer monitor um, so what I do is I, I blow up the chart a lot and I put it on a different sheet where it's a really big chart. I'd never actually have them that big if I was just monitoring myself. I'd have them a lot smaller and I'd probably put multiple charts on one screen. So I'd have one for monthly, one for quarterly, and then I'd make, maybe make even more charts for like my savings and seeing, you know, how my savings rate is and if it's going up, how much money I have in savings and all of that. I think there's a lot of stuff you can do with data visualization that's motivating and helps you get an overview of all your finances. I like doing these charts on Google Spreadsheets a lot more, I found, than doing stuff like Personal Capital or using Mint or any of those type of programs. I usually have a lot more hassle using those. I just like doing these charts more myself. Other things that you can do is if you go back to the Customize here, there's lots of different settings you can do here. If you go to Series, you can scroll down and you can put in trend lines to show a trend. You can change the color of it. You can change the thickness of the lines. One thing you might wanna do is make it so that you can see the data points and how much money each month is without having to like follow the Y axis here. And there's an easy way to do that. On the customize here, when you go to series, I like to check in data labels here. And you'll see back on the chart that it throws in these automatic data labels. If the top one here is cut off, that's because it doesn't have any room. And so what you can do is go back to here 
You can make it instead of the position auto, you can move the position left. And that will make it so that most of them fit. So now we go back to our chart here, and I think that this is looking pretty good. I have a basic chart that I can see my monthly dividends. Um, another thing you can do is you can change the boldness of the text. You can change the color of the chart. You can do all sorts of different things. As far as doing the quarterly chart, it's very simple. You pretty much do the same thing. The only difference is you need to add in another data point that just has every three months added together. So what I would do is I just click on this, go to this right here, hit copy chart, click right here, right click right here, and then hit paste. Now I have two of the same chart, but we want this to be a quarterly chart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here and just like I put the dates here for the monthly chart and the numbers here, I'm gonna use C and D. And there we have the four quarters of 2019. And then you'd put in the numbers that you got paid here as well. So let's say we got paid like $35. Really, you just need to add together every three months. Okay, so now we have Q1 2019 through Q4, as well as these made up numbers that a lot of them are in the future. But we, again, we need to plug this chart instead of it's using the data right now that's linked to here. And we want to make it the quarterly chart that's linked to C and D. So what we do again is you go to the edit chart button here. That'll bring up this pop up here. And we're going to change the chart type. We're going to go down here to column chart. Then what we want to do is change the data that's using. So for the X axis, click on this and hit edit. Hit OK. Then on this, the series one, we want to click on this, hit edit again. Instead of it, just leave this and you go over here up to D, highlight that, and it will change what's in here and then hit OK. And now it's pretty much done. I can go over to this and look, monthly dividends. I have the exact same chart. And it looks a little, you know, it's not as easy to see when you're looking at it on my computer, but this is pretty much what you want to see. If you were looking at your home computer, you could see all of this on one monitor. You can change the sizes real easy. I can go on like this and I can drag it bigger or smaller uh, to fit more data. I can rearrange them. Um, I can have multiple charts on one page so I could put two like this and then two more like this and I could, I could really keep track of a lot of different things. But this is a super basic way to do it, super easy way to do it. I really like this method of keeping track of my data. Um, I have more control over it. I can visualize it in the exact way I want. Let me know if anything's unclear, if you guys still have any questions on anything, but I hope this helps give you a start and get you in the right direction. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. I hope that this is helpful to everybody that uh, wanted to be able to create the charts that I show off in my videos. So I'll talk to you guys later. Till next time. We'll see ya.